Hi everybody, welcome to the Mod Institute follow along training on bridges. We're going to load a practice case that was in the downloads folder on the website. And I'm going to show you how to do this. We have to put the case in Remexis. So go ahead and open Remexis. Um, let's go ahead and add a patient here. I'm going to call this random thing. And I'm going to call this, let's call this practice bridge. Okay, and then let's go to the CAD CAM module here, and we're going to import the zip folder that you should have already downloaded. The way that we do this is we hit the import icon in the CAD CAM module here. We're going to find CAD CAM cases, and we're going to import a single CAD CAM case, and let's find it. It's in my downloads. I don't know where it would be on your computer. It depends on where you have that defaulted to, but... I'm going to go ahead and go to this PC and go to downloads and I'm going to sort by date modified. So it's this, um, the name of the folder is called crown three, <clears> seven. <throat> I'm going to import that in. It does take just a bit of time to import that native file into Remexis. So basically what this zip folder contains is everything that I did. <clears throat> so it's all my original scans and everything. <clears throat> okay, because we could see that the CAD CAM case was successfully imported and we're gonna hit okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, let's design first in PlanCAD Easy and we'll have a separate module for PlanCAD Premium. So let's uh, just double click on the crown folder and let's set the case up from the beginning. <clears throat> okay, so 18, let's pick crown, library A, Emacs, CAD, LT. Actually, we wouldn't do this at Emacs because <clears throat> it's not even FDA approved for bridges this far back in the mouth. So we would do Emacs Dirt CAD, shoulder edge, edge uh, finish line, translucency LT, shade A2, okay? And then we would click tooth number 19. We'll call that a Ponic, library A. And then we'll click tooth number 20 and we'll call that a crown library A. And then we will link them. The way that you link a bridge is hit the distal most tooth and the anterior most tooth and they should all highlight pink. So that is everything that we have. Let's just verify here. We have 18 crown Emacs Zercat LT, 19 Ponic, 20 crown. So now we're gonna be off to the margin tab. <clears throat> and for the margin, you can see here we have tooth number 18, which was tilted pretty severely, uh, mesially, and we have tooth number 20 here prepped. Um, turn on the color if you want, toggle that on and off by hitting this icon right here. The very first thing that we need to do is set the path of design for each of these restorations. So for tooth number 20, I'm gonna go to orientation and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in orientation, I'm going to rotate my model. And this is the only place in the software where the left mouse button rotates. Um, the right mouse button actually does nothing, which is odd, but that's, that's the way it is. So the left uh, mouse button rotates, the rolly ball zooms you in and out. And if you click and hold the rolly ball and move and then let go, you'll see that compass kind of springs into action. So here we are um, for the best design. I'm going to ignore this rotation here and I'm going to design looking straight down at this tooth as if it, the crown was going to fall out of the screen and drop right onto that prep. I'm going to lock that in. I'm ignoring this tooth. We will come back at the very end and set our mill orientation before milling. So I'm going to lock that in 19, Orientation, same thing. I'm uh, gonna put this right in the middle of this crosshairs buckle lingually and lock that in. 18, same thing. 
a little tilted. I'm gonna do something like that. So now let's mark our margin. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to mark our margins. And for subgingival finish lines like this, I'm gonna use trace. Trace means that wherever you put it, it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that all right along my margin here. If you wanna do it in color, you can. But I have really good retraction, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it in stone view. If I lose it right here, I can easily see it here. So I like to sometimes toggle back and forth, but for the most part, I mark in stone. Um, Subgingival areas, sometimes in color. Once you use trace and you complete the circle, you're gonna have this ability to drag the margin and move it using the move margin tool. Uh, move margin tool has is very powerful. You could, if you mess with this rolly icon, this dropper icon, you could move a lot of the margin or if you want it to, just a little bit. So it's up to you. Um, the default is actually pretty, usually pretty good the default setting for, I usually don't mess with it too much. Okay, so once we have the margin mark, you have to look down and see, can you see all the yellow balls all the way around? In other words, let me just accidentally put that down there. <clears throat> and from the kind of the top down view path of insertion, you wanna ask yourself, can you see all the yellow balls in their completeness all the way around the prep? If the answer is no, that means you've fallen into an undercut and you should remedy that by dragging it back up, okay? Like that. Because it will mill that and chip that 100%. So now 19, um, we have to mark a margin for a ponic. And this is a kind of a weird, huge space. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a broad, kind of square-like tooth here. Make sure you click right in the middle of that ball Otherwise it won't, it won't connect. In order to get large, broad connectors, I'm gonna see me cheat and go kind of lingual here. Um, it's almost gonna be like a trapezoid shape when I'm done here. Okay, maybe we're a little bit too far lingual. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tooth number 20. This is kind of super gingival. I'm gonna use lasso. Click somewhere and then let it kind of follow a little bit along the margin. And click little increments and let it try to find it for you and then click right back at that original dot. And then you'll get back to that move margin icon. You could also throw on your color. And I like to toggle the margins on and off and see how they're falling. Okay, so now we need to go to the plan tab. <clears throat> the plan tab is essentially your positioning tool. So you have three options, rotate, resize, and move. And let's start with move. So we have this premolar tooth and I'm gonna put it in position, looking kind of straight down, looking at this adjacent tooth. I'm gonna first get the cusp tips lined up. So I'm gonna rotate this like that, and then I'm gonna resize it to fill the space, okay? Something kind of like that. <clears throat> and now I'm going to turn on the occlusion and see, I wanna make sure I'm not penetrating too far into this tooth. That looks pretty good. Resize it a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna rotate it just back a little bit. 
Now for tooth number 19, same thing. Turn on the opposing. Let's see what we're up against here. Let's rotate that, kind of tilt it back to where the distal marginal ridge is lower. And now I'm gonna bring the whole thing apically a little bit. Maybe kind of like that. Okay. Now we'll go on to 18. I'm gonna resize that. Rotate it down and move that back into position. Maybe like that. And it looks like I made 19 too big, so I'm gonna go back to 19, shrink that, move it a little bit. Okay. So now we're gonna to go to the design. In the design tab, you have a few options. Um, I'm gonna start on tooth number 18. You could have autogenesis on or off. Let's turn it off and hit apply. You tend to get <clears throat> a little bit better anatomy when you turn it off. But it doesn't have any automatic feature like proximal contacts or occlusion, so you do have some more manual work that you have to do. And that could lead to sometimes more labor involved. <clears throat> now I am going to go to 20. <clears throat> okay, so, you know, we have a lot here going on here. We have marginal ridge heights are all over the place and things like that. The best way that I find a remedy to that is go to your freeform tools and hit all and go to your rubber tooth and make it as big as possible. The first thing that I'm going to do is work. I'm going to work posterior to anterior. I'm going to get these contacts right here the way that I want them broad. I'm going to lower these marginal ridges because I know that I have an occlusal issue there. So I'm going to lower that a little bit. Something kind of like that. Because this is a bridge, we want broad connectors here. So I'm going to square these up a little bit like that. Long, broad, and deep connectors. So you want to kind of over contour a little bit in here. I'm gonna to rubber tooth this ponic down, putting a little bit of pressure on the tissue than, than, than what is default. And then we will have to modify this because it's uh, a ridge lap ponic, it's not cleansable. Okay, so now uh, moving forward here, I have an issue with spacing here. I'm gonna go ahead and just start to round this ponic site a little bit. Decrease the height of my non-functional cusps. And try to expand that premolar. Like that. So it's kind of just like sculpting here. That looks good broaden those contacts there. Okay, that's kind of my rough initial outline. Now, we have to now start working on occlusion. <clears throat> Turn on my occlusion, I'm gonna take it one tooth at a time. The way that I like to do this, you have two options. You could turn on your occlusal contact strength. I'm gonna to go to tooth number 20. You could go to this contact refinement tab and literally circle the area. And it will automatically shrink that back, okay? It's a nice way to do it. Um, the other option, let's do tooth number 19. Turn back on your occlusion, turn it twice to make it transparent. Turn on your contact strength and you could literally, you could hit refine and shrink the whole tooth down 
to the predefined amount, but I like to fine tune. So I like this slice tool. So I'm gonna hit slice twice down here. Drag, to drag it, you hit the very edge and you're gonna drag it right over there. And I don't like this non-functional cusp height. So I'm gonna go back to my rubber tooth here and I'm gonna drop that down. Make it go a little bit more lingual. Flatten that out. Same thing, I'm gonna drag it over this area right here. I'm gonna drop this down. And drop this cusp down a little bit. Okay? So you have this ability to slice and look and see how you're contacting and exactly where you're contacting. So you can see here we have like a little bit of an issue where ideally I'd want these cusp tips hitting right about in this central groove <laughs> like that. So there's a few ways to get there. Let me back up by hitting undo. One way to, to move it is to go ahead and go to your incremental change tool and just move the whole entire tooth lingual, okay? Until you pick up those contacts where you want them. And then you could shrink the lingual bulkiness by going to expand and hit the lingual and move it in to make the tooth more narrow. Okay, so that's one option. And then you could uh, refine that using your, your kind of rubber tooth tools um, and your smooth to kind of blend this. Okay, so we kind of morphed these cusp tips. The other option is to hit the move feature, which literally lets you grab a cusp at a time and move just that cusp like this, which is kind of really powerful. You could raise the central groove. You could even just focus on a marginal ridge at a time. <clears throat> it does, um, when you use the move tool, sometimes it does leave like these weird artifacts, which if you just hit smooth and just hit it once, it'll go away immediately like that. Okay, so that's just something to be mindful of. Okay, so we're more in the uh, location that I would like for occlusal contacts here. Get rid of these weird bulkiness. Okay, now we're gonna move. So once again, let me just see here. I'm gonna slice this. Let me go ahead and grow this up a little bit. Add a flat contact right here, right there. I have one here, one here, and that's good for me. <clears throat> now I'm gonna go to tooth number 18, and that's the color you want, that black color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the contact refinement tab over here, and I'm gonna circle these areas. And I'm now going to slice it to see where I'm at. So I'm gonna drag this over here, right over this, and I can see, I still think I need to nerf the inclined plane of this non-functional cusp right here. I'm gonna bring that down. I don't want that hitting. So we're hitting on the mesial, which don't usually want the mesial marginal ridge to hit here, but I don't see a way around it. Okay, I don't like this contact on the inclined plane here, so I'm gonna get out of my slice plane <clears throat> tool here. I'm gonna to go to dropper, and I'm actually gonna to go to dropper down, dropper minus. And I hit that away, free up that there, lighten this mesial contact a little bit here. Okay, that looks good. That's flat surface, flat surface, functional cusp. Um, tooth number 19, good flat surface contact. Tooth number 20. Um, that's a weak area because it's kind of just hanging out in space right there. So I'm gonna beep that up a little bit. And I'm actually going to move it to be more towards the middle of that marginal ridge. 
So if I come here to dropper, I really want it to be maybe right there. And I'm gonna smooth that out. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that looks really good. So here we have our preliminary design here. Okay, <clears throat> I do realize that this tooth kind of shifted a little bit lingual, but that is once again due to the opposing. Um, I want this, I could have actually moved that out a little bit. A little bit more buckle. Like that. Like that. See what that did to the occlusion. That's good. All I need to do is just nerf that a little bit. So I'm going to come drop or minus and just make it black. Okay. That looks better. So let me smooth that out. Actually adding that contact added like a little peak right there. Let's check our proximal contact here. First thing is I like these marginal ridges to be coincident and kind of parallel one another. So same height, roughly the same height. Let's trim this and see by hitting the trim icon, turn on tooth number 20. Proximal contact strength should be uh, teal. Maybe like that, like that kind of green, like that. Okay, perfect. Don't worry about these connectors yet. So now we're gonna go ahead, before we go to the mill tab, we're gonna check our material thickness. I think I need to bulk out that cervical area there. This is gonna be Zerk. So a millimeter is about the minimum I want. So, you know, kind of that light green. 19, we're gonna be fine because it's a ponic. 18, we might have some issues. That's actually okay. A little bit thin on the buckle. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dropper that on default. Let's see, let me undo that. Dropper on default a few times. Get it to be that kind of yellow orange color. I'm sorry, yellow green color. That's perfect. No chipping there. It's gonna be fine. Okay, so material thickness is good. Now the last thing is we need to do our uh, tissue pressure. Okay, so let's look at that tooth number 19, turn on our tissue pressure and turn off our model. Okay, this is right now, This and of course this is really easy to fix after the mill too. This is a ridge lap where you have a concavity on both sides with a flange and a flange. We cannot have that because it's impossible to clean. So we're gonna go ahead and go to smooth. And I'm gonna smooth out that lingual ridge lap by nerfing it, okay, like that, and make it flat. And I'm gonna actually add, by using dropper, a little bit right here. Now, this is what's deceiving. We're actually still putting a lot of pressure here. So I'm gonna actually go to dropper minus now and start to get this thing to be where it's green and just a little bit of pressure right there in the center. And I'm gonna smooth this out here because you want this to be cleansable and a little bit of pressure on that buckle right there. That looks good. So let's look at the contour. Drop or minus there a little bit. I want a green line just like that on the facial with a little bit of that green extending kind of the middle of the ridge and then I want pressure alleviated. And that should create a modified ridge lap Smooth the sharp sharpness here by adding a little bit of a bead on the buckle here. And smooth that out. 
Okay. Let's modify ridge lap tonic means that you're flat and then you go into a ridge lap, whereas you don't have a bilateral ridge lap, which a bilateral ridge lap would look like this, where you have this V shape and you can't clean in the middle. You could of course do ovate ponic or heart shaped bullet ponic, whatever you want. But in this case, this, this ridge is best suited for, I still even have a little bit of a, maybe a tiny bit of a, of a concavity right here. I'm gonna just decrease that arc there. <clears throat> okay. Let's keep moving on now. So we have to do our, basically our dual path of insertion. So earlier on when we went to our margin tab and we did our orientation, we set it for best design. Now we need to set the path of insertion for the whole bridge. So pick tooth number 18, pick one tooth and stick with it, tooth number 18. And now go to your orientation and now let's set the path of insertion for the entire bridge. So what does that mean? Well. It's a three, four axis mill, which means, basically what that means is you need to be able to see the entirety of your margin all the way around both teeth at the same time, unobstructed, and still see some of this proximal surface here. So if it was like this, this is really good for this tooth, right? Tooth number 18, but it's bad for tooth number 20 because I could barely see my margin on the, dis the distal buckle. If I did it like this, this is really good for tooth number 20. I could see my margin all the way around nice and clear and I could also see some proximal here, but I can't see my mesial margin here. That means that would mill open, completely open. So you kind of have to split the difference here. I want to be able to see this all the way around here, my margin. I want to be able to see, don't worry about the tissue. This tissue here doesn't matter. It, it, that has nothing to do with the mill path. It's, you wanna be able to see your margin all the way around both teeth. So here, that's pretty good here. That's pretty good here, but I might have an issue with this proximal contact seating wise. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it just a little bit more like this. I could see all my margin here, all the way around here. I could see all this nice. I'm gonna rotate it just a little bit this way. I'm gonna lock that in, okay? Make sure you pick number 18 when you get to the mill. Let's go to our design and check our cement gap settings. And then we'll go ahead to the mill tab and do a simulation. So for, for a cement gap, you hit this little red icon. For this is Zerk, so I'm gonna want this cemented. So I want my margin ramp to be half the thickness of my margin. So I'm gonna put it about two five because I have about a half a millimeter margin as my thinnest area. Once again, margin ramp is half of the thickness of the thinnest area of your margin. So for no prep veneer, you have no margin. So your margin ramp will be about zero. Um, if you have a half a millimeter feather, your margin will be about 0.2. If you're one millimeter all the way around, you could drag that up to 0.5. And what this represents is the area that's touching your margin. It looks good on radiographs to have a thick band of ceramic pressing against the margin. So that the more you could put it, the better, but you might get into milling issues, binding issues along your axial walls if you have this to be one and you don't have a lot of taper and you have a feather finish line, it's gonna slide along your wall on seating. So that's what that's for. So we're gonna put this at about 0.2-ish. Uh, cement gap for cemented, I want it to be 0.8 if I'm gonna use the glass ionomer. If I'm gonna use something like Panavia or Verilink Aesthetic or whatever, resin cement, I'm gonna put it at one. I'm definitely gonna bond this in, so I'm gonna put this at one. Hit apply. Same thing on tooth number 20, same settings. So we'll go to tooth number 20, change this to point two something, point one. And you could, you could change the defaults. Uh, you could also hit this arrow and go right to nice setting. Hit apply. If you don't hit apply, it doesn't actually take effect. So now we're gonna to go to the mill tab and don't leave it on 20. You have to pick the tooth that you set that last orientation for the best path of insertion, which was 18 for me. 
So I'm going to re put that on 18. And now I'm going to do a simulation. There's a few different types of simulations. We're going to do the slow, painful one. We're going to go to our settings tab. We're going to go to simulation settings and put quality. Okay, quality. And this is Zerk, so we're going to mill this in detailed mode. So we're going to go to sim detailed. Okay. And now it's going to take its sweet time and it's going to run a really detailed simulation. So this does take a lot of uh, hardware power to be able to do this. It's literally milling this before it mills it. And the simulations are actually probably the most accurate mill sims that I've ever seen is on quality sim. What you see is really what you're going to get out of the mill. <clears throat> so it, it's worth going maybe through just this extra little time here to ensure that you're going to be good with your fits and your connectors and everything like that. And this is also when the software generates your connectors. <clears throat> They're not generated, nor are they editable in the design software. Um, the software automatically does connectors and your design, there's things that you could do in your design that will help the software make thicker connectors, like make these long, broad contacts, slightly over contour the gingival embrasure space. Um, that'll start leading to better connectors. So here we are. Um, about done hopefully with this simulation here. It, <clears throat> Usually it takes about three to five minutes depending on how fast your computer is to do a quality sim on a three unit bridge like this. Let's see here. Beautiful. That is gonna be hot. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a few things that I'm looking for. One is I'm going to immediately slice this right down mesial to distal, right down the middle. And I'm gonna look at the fit. And what I'm looking for is my margin to be closed here, 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 and back here, and it is. And that looks really good. So now I'm gonna unslice this, and I'm gonna look from the underside, and I'm looking for binding spots. It's okay to have a line of blue around your margin. That is the only spot that it's okay to have blue. If you see blue anywhere else up on the surface, that means it's a binding spot. So let me show you something really quick. This, is, this would be good to mill. <clears throat> um, I could slice it at my connectors and measure my connector dis thickness too. So we got a huge connector there. It's green, it would be red if it was too small. It's blue, so it's good. That's maybe a little bit too small here. So you could measure it yourself. Let's say you wanted, depending on if you're using 3Y, 4Y, or 5Y, um, each square here represents a millimeter. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, we have about nine square millimeters here, so I'm not too worried about that. <clears throat> um, I, I mean, it'd be better if I could get 10 to 12. Um, okay, so let me show you something about simulation real quick. I'm gonna go back to my margin. I'm gonna change my path of orientation to be like this. Say I wasn't paying attention. And I'm gonna go back to my mill. And to save time here, I'm gonna put this on speed simulation because it's gonna take forever. All right, let's see what kind of disasters we have from that orientation. So probably have some binding spots on that mesial wall, like it won't see. Let's see, let me turn off this. Yeah, so look at what we have here. We have margin that is binding and we have 
binding spots right here on the mesial incisal corner, mesial occlusal corner of that tooth, which would keep it from, let me see if I can slice it right along, yeah. Let me zoom in right here. So it's, and that's not even at the binding, the maximum binding site, which is, get her right to that corner here. Yeah, so it'll hit here prematurely, leaving this margin open uh, when you go to seed it. And plus we have all sorts of weird stuff going on with here where we have <clears throat> this incredible amount of over milling occurring because of a, this extreme rotation path of insertion that we did. So once again, this dual path of insertion is key to success for these bridges. Um, <clears throat> All right, so the next video, we're going to go through how to do these bridges in PlaidCAD Premium. So that'll be in a different module. So I hope you could follow along with that as well. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this mod tutorial, and we will be back to do many more.